Welcome to Mrs E English Skills. I'm Mrs E and today we're looking at AQA GCSE English Language Paper 2 Writer's Viewpoints and Perspectives. Today we're going to do an introduction of this paper and also look at question 1. Firstly, what do we mean by viewpoints and perspectives? If we're looking to find the writer's viewpoints and perspectives, we need to have a good idea of what they are. This paper is assessing your insights into how writers have particular viewpoints and perspectives on issues or themes that are important to the way we think and live our lives. So what's the difference between viewpoint and perspective? Well, very little. They essentially mean the same thing. A viewpoint is a particular attitude or way of considering the matter. And a perspective is a particular attitude towards or way of regarding something, i.e. a point of view, which is another way of saying viewpoint. Basically, what do they think and feel? So what does this exam paper look like? Well, it's very similar to paper one. As you can see, there is a section A, which is reading section, and we look at one non-fiction text and one literary non-fiction text. And we've got four questions, just like we have in paper one. One short form question with four marks, two longer form question, one with eight marks, one with 12 marks, and one extended question with 16 marks. There's a slight difference in the amount of marks allocated in this paper as you get more marks for question three and less marks for question four. It also has section B, which is the writing question. And as with paper one, it's one extended writing question with 24 marks for content and 16 marks for technical accuracy. So how does paper two compare to paper one? Let's look at some similarities and differences. The first similarity is there's a reading section with four questions. However, a main difference is these four questions are in relation to two sources rather than one. One source is from the 19th century, which is the 1800s, and one source is from the 20th to the 21st century, so relatively modern day texts. Another difference is these two sources are non-fiction. So they can be from genres such as high quality journalism, articles, reports, essays, travel writing, accounts, sketches, letters, diaries, autobiography, and biographical passages. Another similarity is the writing section has one question. And this question is in relation to the theme or the topic of section A. It will specify audience, purpose and form and will use a range of opinion, statements and writing scenarios to provoke a response. This again will be non-fiction. Could be asked to write a letter, article, speech, blog post, review or leaflet. So bearing in mind you will be looking at a 19th century text in this exam paper, how much do you need to know about the 19th century? Well don't worry about this too much. Although it's helpful to have a general idea of the main differences between then and now, the exam requires you to analyse text and you can undertake a good analysis of text without a full understanding of context. If you can analyse text, it doesn't matter when it's from, because you are looking at how you interpret the text, what is suggested and implied, your reaction to that text. So you should be able to take each text at face value. Maybe brush up on some general knowledge and think about what was happening at that time versus what is happening now and within the 20th century. Let's look at paper two, question one, true or false? 
For this first question, you will be given eight statements about a part of one of the sources, normally lines 1 to 17 of source A. You have to pick out which statements are true. Only four are true and there are four marks available, so you need to shade in four boxes. Not sure on all four? Have a guess. It's not worth leaving it out when you could potentially guess the right answer. So let's look at an example. Here you can see the first page in an exam paper. The question asks you to read again the first part of source A from lines 1 to 10 and choose four statements below which are true. You're instructed to circle, sorry, shade the circles in the box of the ones that you think are true. Choose a maximum of four statements. If you make an error, it tells you what to do there. And underneath all of that information, you can see the statements that you are given. So four of these statements are false and four of them are true. For the ones that are true, you shade in the circles within the boxes. So let's look at the text. This extract is from Clive James's autobiography, published in 1980. Here, he writes about going to the cinema as a child in Australia in the 1940s. Every Saturday afternoon at the pictures, there was a feature film, 16 cartoons and an episode each from four different serials. The programme just went on and on and on. The Margaret Street children would join up with the Irene Street children and the combined mass would add themselves to the Sunbeam Avenue children and they would join the swarm of children from all the other areas, all moving north along Rocky Point Road towards Rockdale, where the Odeon stood. In summer, the concrete footpaths were hot. The tarmac footpaths were even hotter. Bubbles of tar formed, to be squashed flat by our leathery bare feet. Running around on gravelled playgrounds throughout the spring, by summer we had feet that could tread on a drawing pin and hardly feel it. Let's remind ourselves of the statements that we would need to decide whether they're true or false. So A. The cinema programme was every Saturday morning. B. The cinema programme was short. C. The children all came from the same street. D. The children formed a large group as they moved through the streets. E. The Odeon was in Rockdale. F. The children wore shoes. G. The children went to the cinema on foot. H. The children had really tough feet. Pause the video here to have a go at this task and pick out the four statements that you believe are true. I will reveal the answers in a moment. So please make sure you do pause the video if you want to have a go. Let's look at the answers. When I reveal the answers, the parts of the text that give us the answers will be highlighted as well. So look out for that. So the first true statement is D. The children formed a large group as they moved through the streets. The second is E. The odium was in Rockdale. The third statement that's true is G. The children went to the cinema on foot. And the fourth and final true statement is H. The children had really tough feet. How did you do? That concludes our first look at paper two. An introduction and a look at question one, true or false. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And don't forget to stick around for the rest of this playlist in order to fully prepare you for GCSE English Language AQA exams this summer and beyond. Also, check out my other playlists for functional skills and basic skills in English to keep improving. There's lots more to come. And the more subscribers I get, the more I'll be able to upload. Thank you everyone, I'm Mrs E and I'll see you soon.